All right, welcome back to part two of the Unreal Engine C++ tutorial for beginners. If you didn't see part one, definitely go and check that out because I will be kind of working on the assumption that you've already seen that part. Uh, but with that being said, we're kind of going to be moving in a different direction. Uh, in the last tutorial, we were kind of messing with the character. And in this tutorial, we're going to be making a new actor that's like a lift that you can walk on and it will go up just to show you uh, how components work and kind of just show it being used in action because the last tutorial it was more hypothetical in this tutorial I actually wanted to show you how you would use it for something more practical so if we go to Unreal um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the lift purely in blueprints which shouldn't take very long at all because it's super easy and then we're going to take that and we're going to move it over piece by piece into C++ so that you can see um, like one-to-one -one what happens in blueprints and what you need to do in C++ to also make that happen. So if we go ahead and we create our lift actor, we'll say BP lift, we can double click on this and add a static mesh component. And we also want to add a box component or box collision component so that we can use it as a trigger. And hopefully a lot of this is um, already known by you guys, and you're mostly here for the C++ part. So the shape that we want to use is, it doesn't really matter, we'll use this cube and just kind of squash it down a bit. 0 0.1, make the X like 2, okay. And then the box we want to kind of put on top of it, make it a little wider. And like that, maybe a little taller. All right, that's probably good. So the idea is that when you walk on top of this platform, you'll collide with this box. And when you collide with that box, we're going to tell the platform to go up. So if we go back to our event graph, we can right click on the box and add a on component begin overlap, which this will get called whenever that little box gets overlapped. And we want to make sure that it's overlapping with the player. So we'll cast it to a third person character. And if it is a third person character, then we want to move the lift up uh, or down, depending on where it's currently at. So I'm going to make a new custom event for this. And it's going to be called on box triggered. And we will call that from right here. I'm just doing this off the top of my head, by the way, so if I make a mistake, I'm sorry. Okay, so on box triggered, we are going to want to have a timeline to move the piece up and down. So this will be called um, lift timeline, I guess. And before that, we're going to want to do probably a flip-flop node. And a flip-flop node, if you don't know what that is, um, the first time it runs, it runs A. The second time it runs, it runs B, and then A, and then B. So as you can see, I've hooked up A to play and B to reverse. So basically, the first time uh, we trigger the box, we'll play the timeline. The next time we trigger it, we'll reverse the timeline. So it will kind of move the piece up and then back down. Uh, hopefully, most of this is already pretty common knowledge to you guys. So we're going to want to edit this a little bit, um, double click on it, and click this little float track. And we'll say that the length of it is 3, because I think 5 is a little long. And we want to add two nodes, so right click, and add a key, and right click again, and add a key. And the first one we want to set to, oops, that's not where we do that. The first one we want to set to 0, and 0. And the next one we want to set to 3 and 1. And if you click these two little buttons here to the left, it will kind of put it nicely into view. So you can see it goes from 0, 0, 2, 3, 1. Um, and then we can change the track name by pressing F2. And we'll just call this uh, height, I guess. Okay, so then we close this. Um, now there's some things we need to 
set up real quick before we can finish this timeline is we need a couple variables for where the uh, where the lift will start at and where it will end at. And basically the way we want it to work is that if they drag the lift into the world somewhere, then we want the starting height to be wherever it heights at. So if a designer or somebody puts it right here, we want it to we want the starting height to go right here and we want it to go up a certain amount and we want it to come back down and and uh, stop wherever it initially started at. So we want to save the starting height. So to do that, um, we'll just create a variable called starting height. And we'll create another one for ending height. And like I said, we'll move all this over to C++, but I just want to get it working in blueprints first to show you how it's done. And I also think this is probably a good way to do things in general. I typically create it in blueprints and then move it over to C++ just so uh, it's a little easier to do things in blueprints, to be honest. Okay. And then we just want to set the starting height to our actor's location, but really only the uh, Z value of it. Oops, we want set, not get. Set starting height. And the ending height is simply the starting height plus some value. Now, this value is something that we should probably expose so that a designer could set it to whatever they want. So we'll just do that. We'll make another one for uh, lift height. And if we click this little I button here, it will expose it um, so that it can be edited per each instance of the blueprint that exists in the world. So we just need to simply add these together, like so. And that is our ending height. Yeah, just to recap, the starting height is wherever it starts at. The ending height is our starting height plus however high we want it to go. Okay, so now that we have those values, we can come down here, and in the update, we're basically just going to be setting the actor's location. So set actor location. And we only want to adjust the Z. So we also want to get actor location, and we want to keep the X and Y values the same. So we'll just drag those over like that. So X and Y aren't changing. We only want to change Z. Now we can't quite just do this because height is going from zero to one and we want it to go from starting height to ending height. But a very easy way to do that is to use the lerp node. And it will basically interpolate using this alpha between the starting height, which is A, and the ending height, which is B. Uh, if you've never used Lerp before, it's really not that confusing. It just, if you read it, it says it linearly interpolates between A and B based on alpha. So as an example, 100% of A will be used when alpha is 0, and 100% of B will be used when alpha is 1. So, you know, when this timeline first starts, height will be 0, so alpha will be 0, and we'll be using all of our starting height. And as the height starts to go up, the alpha will go up, and we'll get closer to using this ending height value, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have that, I think we're basically ready. So if we go back to our world, we'll move this to a more reasonable location where it might actually be useful. Okay. And the other thing we need to do is just set the height, the lift height. So this is something a designer would do. And you can see he doesn't have access to the starting height oops, to the starting height or anything like that because we don't want them to and we want to make sure we keep that when we move it over to C++. So the lift height, we'll just say it goes up 200. So if I come over here, hopefully this just works. Okay, so I walk on it and it goes up. And, okay, it stops and we get off and if I go back on it again, nice, it goes back down uh, right to where we initially had put it. So that's basically the implementation in Blueprints. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and now I'm just going to show you guys how to move this over to C++. Uh, and I will do that in the next video. It will uh, start right where this one left off. So keep watching.